Hi everyone, my name is Brendan Murtha and I'm the Bruce Museum Seaside Center Naturalist for the 2020 season. I'm going to be narrating this brief PowerPoint on the history of Greenwich Point and the Innes Arden Cottage. There's substantial evidence that what we now call Greenwich Point had a long history of indigenous presence. The local Siwanoi peoples, who spoke a regional dialect of the Algonquin language called Munsi, called the point Manaquego, and recent archaeological digs have uncovered shell piles and artifacts indicating Manaquego played an important role in local tribal life. After the town of Greenwich was purchased from the Siwanois in 1640, the point passed into the hands of Elizabeth Feek and her family. The land was then known locally as Elizabeth's Neck. It should be noted that, at this point, and for the next 250 years, the point was only connected to the mainland at low tide. The neck in question was a sandbar that submerged during high water. Because of this, access and development was limited, and up until the purchasing of the point by the Todds, the land was used modestly by local farming families. Some of you may still know Greenwich Point by the name Todd's Point, a small part of the immense legacy left behind on the property by John Kennedy Todd and his family. The Todds owned and occupied the point during the decades around the turn of the century and reshaped the land in unprecedented ways. John Kennedy Todd was a Scot born in Glasgow. Before moving to the U.S. full-time and making a fortune, Mr. Todd enjoyed a prolific career as a rugby player in the U.K., he eventually joined his uncle's business practice as an investment banker in New York City and specialized in the financing of railroad projects around the country. In the late 1800s, many affluent New Yorkers were leaving the city to purchase seaside and summer homes along the Connecticut coastline, which, now connected to the city by rail, were more accessible than ever. The relatively quiet coastal countryside, still largely agricultural at this time, was rapidly transformed into the playground of the ultra-rich, establishing a different sort of pastoral tranquility. Mr. Todd and his new wife, formerly Maria Howard Potter of a wealthy New York business family, tapped into this craze by buying up, piece by piece, the land of Greenwich Point from the local families who lived there. When they purchased Greenwich Point, Mr. and Mrs. Todd envisioned a large estate well-suited for recreation and relaxation. They called it Innes Arden. By 1887, the Todds had acquired the entirety of the point and began construction, building a large manor and a system of roads permanently connecting the property to the mainland. The causeway was built up with sediment left over from the construction of subway tunnels in the city nearby. The Todds filled in marshes to create ornamental lakes and ponds for exotic imported waterfowl and created a golf course locals could play on for a membership fee. They allowed locals access to the beach as well, establishing the point as a recreational hub for residents of the area. The Innes Arden Cottage, where the Seaside Center is now housed, was one of several other buildings on the Innes Arden property. It was built in 1903. John Kennedy Todd died in 1925, and Maria Todd passed in 1939, over a decade later. The Innes Arden estate remained in the family for a few more years, but it was eventually purchased by the town of Greenwich in 1945 for the purposes of a public park. Much of the infrastructure left by the Todds remained in place for years to come, and some of it persists to this day. However, the main Innes Arden house, the Central Manor, was demolished by the town in 1961 after falling into serious disrepair. The foundations of the manor still make up the point's hanging gardens today. Other leftovers from the Innes Arden estate include the Innes Arden Cottage, the reinforced roads and causeway, and the culverts and walls of what is now Eagle Pond. The Innes Arden Cottage, after its construction in 1903, serves primarily as the summer retreat for overworked nurses of the New York Presbyterian Hospital School, who Mr. and Mrs. Todd developed close relations with. The nurses continued to use the retreat up until the town purchased the point, and after that, the cottage was used for a variety of educational and recreational purposes. Like many other buildings on the property, however, its upkeep was neglected, and the cottage was frequently subjected to the harsh weather conditions of the shoreline. In 2004, after the Greenwich Point Conservancy was founded, the cottage was identified as a priority for restoration to its former grandeur. From 2006 to 2011, the cottage was refurbished to the beautiful state it's in today, combining its historical style with modern functionality. 
Much of the cottage's interior looks as it would have during its heyday in the early 20th century, yet it boasts cutting-edge educational capabilities. The cottage is now home to the Florin Family Environmental Center and the Bruce Museum Seaside Center, both of which opened there in 2011. Thanks for listening. We hope you learned something, and we hope to see you at Greenwich Point Park in the Bruce Museum Seaside Center sometime soon.